Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios as always, and today I'm going to show you how to disassemble and reassemble an Xbox One. I'm going to be cleaning this one, and so that's why there are cleaning products in the video. I don't go into depth on how to clean things, it is pretty self-explanatory once you get in there, um, and I touch on that a little bit in this video. Um, and then I also go into depth on what tools you're going to need to disassemble this. And I'll put, of course, links down in the description below on all the toolkits and the tools that I've used in the video. All right, before we jump into things, I just wanted to take a few moments to kind of show what you needed as far as tools and cleaning supplies and that kind of thing. Um, so first, what we're going to do is we've got our bottle of isopropyl alcohol, 91%. Um, I, I know because of the times that we're in, because of the pandemic, that kind of thing, um, I, alcohol is kind of hard to find. Um, I don't recommend using anything other than the highest percentage of isopropyl you can, because we are working with electronics and you don't want to use anything lower than like say 90, um, anything lower than 90, you are going to have some moisture, con some water in it. Um, water does conduct electricity. Alcohol does not. So use the highest isopropyl alcohol that you can. Um, next, we're gonna be using, of course, some air duster, it's just compressed air. If you've got an air compressor, you can use that too. We're gonna be blowing out a lot of the larger components. Um, we're gonna be doing that outdoors, of course, because it is dusty and kind of a messy. Um, a brush, you can use something that's, you know, nylon or acrylic or, you know, horse hair or any kind of hair, as long as it's clean, um, preferably brand new. I picked this one up for like 86 cents or something like that at um, Harbor Freight. And then a plastic body tool. You can also use a flathead screwdriver if you want. Um, but I like to use these plastic automotive body tools because they don't mar up the case of the Xbox as, as severely as like a metal flathead screwdriver. I'll put a link down in the description on where I got basically everything here. Um, and then, of course, you want something microfiber or even a, just a regular towel. So a rag. You can use paper towels if you want to. And then I like to use a little divider here. You can use a Tupperware bowl or something to put your fasteners in so you don't lose them. And then this one here is actually an iFixit kit. Um, I'll put a link on description. You, of course, don't need to get, you know, this full kit, but if you're going to be doing a lot of electronics, this is, you know, something that you really want to pick up. Um, the only thing that you're going to need for um, driver bits is really just, just the Torx bits. So if you've got, you know, an inexpensive set of Torx, um, then you can go ahead and use that. You don't need to use, you know, you don't need to purchase an entire kit like this. All right, so this is the Xbox going to be cleaning. Um, I, I I know it's a few years old, maybe five or six years. Um, actually, let's look and see if it's got a warranty sticker on it. And it does. It's right there. Um, just before we get into this, the moment you destroy this warranty sticker, if you don't care about the warranty on the Xbox, you've had it long enough that maybe the warranty is expired or what have you, then, you know, you can take that off. But just so you're aware, this will void the warranty on the Xbox One. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to take off this um, left side bracket. So the CD drive is right here in the front. Um, we're going to flip this over to the left side. So you've got your like, little USB port and then your uh, link button. We're just going to pull off this, this panel here. All right. And to get this panel pulled off, we're actually going to grab our little body tool. And you just want to come over here on this on this corner and lift that up. And you just want to pry it off. Then once you get it started, you can just go ahead and pop that left cover off. And the next thing that we're going to be taking a look at is this little lock on the inside of this. And this lock here is actually just going to slide all the way out, just like that. Go ahead and put all of your plastics aside. So that's really all there is to it to unlock or open up this left side of the case. The other side of the case doesn't actually open up that way. It's just, um, it's all molded into one piece. You know, there's a top piece and a bottom piece. Um, and there's just clips here that I'll show you how to pull those off here in a second. So next, what we want to do is this is probably the trickiest part. 
All right, so now that we're in this position, this is actually, you know, still the same left side. It's just on the back left corner. What you want to do is you actually want to push down on this piece and lift up here and then spread it apart. So by doing that, you put your thumb, your forefinger here, twist. And as soon as you get a little gap, then what you can do is you can actually move it to the back side and there's going to be a clip directly underneath your tamper sticker. So let's go ahead and tear that tamper sticker. And actually, in doing so, I just popped the clip. All you have to do is just push on it. And from here, what you need to do is you need to keep pressure opening this up. And there's going to be three more clips above this um, vent right here. So let's go ahead and see if we can't get... They're going to be right above the vent. Actually, we're going to keep using the same tool here. And all we have to do is push in and away just a little bit. Just like that. It is kind of tricky. Just be careful, be gentle. You don't want to break anything. Now that we've got three large clips popped off the back, let's go ahead and set this back down. And we can actually continue to pull these pull these clips out. So you're going to wrap around this other side. And as you can see, it just comes loose. There we go. Now that we've got that top cover off. So this point right here, you want to be extremely, extremely, extremely careful with. Okay. So... What happens is there is actually a ribbon, um, ribbon cable that plugs in like your power sensor and then the, the, the buttons on the front. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna gently lift this top case up. All right, we're just gonna move this top case up just a little bit. And if you look down inside here, so on this back side, down in the bottom of this, I know it's kind of hard to see and get a picture of it, um, but there is more clips that we're gonna have to remove. And if you just see my tool come in here, and what you want to do is you just want to move them down as you're applying pressure to the top of the case. Okay, so once you get those clips on the front all undone, I mean, this, this whole top just rotates out, and you have to be very, very careful. Don't just go pulling stuff off, because there is a... I don't know if you can see it here. It's really, I don't want to move it because it's kind of delicate. There is a um, ribbon cable right here, and it's just attached to this to this front board right here. So I'm actually going to remove that, and then I'll show you how the locking mechanism works. All right, so we got that top case off. Let me show you this locking mechanism on this ribbon cable here. It's actually this white connector right here. And the way that this works is there's a tan um, slide. It's basically a lock. And if you take this tool here, you can actually move this out. So when it's popped out is actually the unlocked position. Now, when you're plugging in and unplugging ribbon cables, th there should be no resistance to, un to undo them, okay? So this is in the unlocked position. You put the ribbon cable back in. You wrap the plastic part of the ribbon cable around the back side, and then you just squeeze that back closed. And let me show you on the case on the other side of this. On the ribbon cable itself here. So I know it's kind of difficult to see if the camera would focus here. So there is a blue, um, there it goes, there's a blue um, little tab that goes on the back side and that's just to keep that ribbon cable in place um, and then so that little tab slides in. That's that's all it is. Just be super gentle. Be very careful because you don't want to tear that. That will control your um, um, basically all your buttons on the front side here um, is what that what that plugs into. So we're going to put this to the side. Um, as you can see, it's, you know, dirty on the top. We're going to be cleaning this, obviously. Um, and so we're going to set this aside for right now. All right, let's flip this around to the front. So, of course, this is the front of the Xbox. You've got a fan here. Um, you've got a um, little speaker 
And then on the back left corner is actually your wireless card. So we're going to go ahead and unplug this first. There's a cable that runs across the top to the front board. And if you just grab it with your fingernails or maybe a tiny little pair of pliers, it just clips down on top is all it is. So if we remove that from both sides, because it is anchored um, to the top of the case. And so um, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our um, torque set pull out those two screws. All right, so there is two screws, one here and one here on the top of this card. And they are T8, so Torx T8. So we're just gonna go ahead and unscrew both of those. Let's go ahead and put our screws in our container. Now, this card just lifts up, but right here on this edge here, there's actually a plug-in that it plugs to on the board. So when you pull this off, just remember to lift lift straight up. And if you need to, you can always put something flat, not a screwdriver. Something flat over here. Just be super gentle when you're doing this. Just like that. So we flip that over. You can see there is a there's a plug in there. We're gonna set that aside. And now what we can do is let's actually disconnect our speaker. And it's just a plug in. You just wiggle it just a little bit and it'll it'll unplug. So now that we've got all of the components unplugged, let's go ahead and start taking out all of our screws. Um, if you look, I don't think you can see it in the video, but there is um, numbers that's got a, that have a C next to them, so C1, C7, um, C5. Those are all the fasteners that um, hold the top, the, actually the two halves of the metal case together. So the fasteners that are holding the two halves together are T10s. And we're just going to go ahead and remove all of them. There is eight screws you've got to take out, and they're all rather really long. So there's one here, there's one on the top left, one right above the speaker, two in the middle, one down in the front middle, bottom right, and top right. That's, that's all eight of them. So let's go ahead and put those on our container. And now you can really just lift this whole top case right off. So again, don't yank it right off there is a connection so where your wireless card was plugged into there's a cable on the other side of that that you have to unplug before you go yanking stuff off so if you just reach underneath and unplug it from the board itself of course when you're pulling that off here i'll show you what i'm talking about grab the plastic connector and not the wires you don't want to pull those out It's actually, it's really not as dirty as I thought it was going to be. It actually looks pretty good. Um, and so from here, if you were wanting to maybe upgrade your um, your hard drive, you want to put a different um, CD drive in it or, you know, um, clean the fan, this is, of course, where you're going to want to do that. Um, to remove the CD drive, this actually, or excuse me, the hard drive, this actually just lifts right up because it's just on a little, some locating pins and then some risers where those screws go into it. And then there is some um, torques that hold the hard drive to the hard drive tray. And then there's a SATA, SATA cable, SATA cable and a power cable to unplug. And then you can just plug in a new one if you're wanting to replace that. We're going to put it back because we're not going to be doing anything with the hard drive. It's really super simple to take the CD drive out, unplug it from the board itself. Just like that and it just lifts up so just lifts straight up at it and then so um for you guys that have watched the um how to get a cd out or dvd or game out of the xbox one if it is stuck in there um you can actually go through these exact same steps if you want to and the little hole that we're actually putting that tool in is right there so if you take a you know paper clip something stiff and push on that it will actually open up that tray manually so you can get stuff out. Or if you want to, you can get on Amazon. I'm sure you can, um, or eBay, Amazon, you can find a um, replacement one. I'm sure you could probably get one from Microsoft that you can just, you know, pull this one apart and get the drive out and put a new one in if you want.
Next, we're going to be removing the fan. And actually, the fan is something that you're probably going to want to use a flathead screwdriver for. Um, and so you're not really going to worry about damaging anything. You could possibly bend the fins on the heat sink. I mean, please try, try and refrain from doing that. So we're just going to get a, a small flathead screwdriver bit that we can do. And so there's four of them. There's actually some ports that you can stick your screwdriver in. And you just want to gently lift up and pry away from the heat sink, which is actually going to open up these little clips here. Once you get one side, of course, it'll just pop off. We open and we move this. I actually have to move this hard drive out of the way a little bit. And you can see that it's plugged in right here on the case. So we're going to unplug that. And there's the fan. Um, and if we look down in this, you can actually see we've got some dirt built up on the um, heatsink. And if you're wanting to get all the way down to the processor, this actually, this metal tray is actually just sitting in this plastic. So you can lift this up and it's going to be these four torques here. And that heat sink will just come right out just like a PC. But if for cleaning purposes, we're not going to be removing that. We're actually going to just be taking this outside, blowing everything off really, really well. Um, possibly using, we're going to be using some rubbing alcohol on the exterior of the case. You don't really need to use anything for the interior as long as there hasn't been anything spilled, like anything sticky or anything liquid or anything like that. Um, if it's just dirt and dust, just blow it out. Don't use any rubbing alcohol on the interior of anything, just on the exterior and use, you know, use it pretty sparingly. You don't want to get it, you know, completely soaked on all the plastic. So let's go ahead and get everything all cleaned up and then we can bring it back inside and uh, put it all back together. All right, so going back together is going to be the exact opposite as, of course, it came apart. So we're going to go ahead and put the bottom of the case back into the plastic base. Let's go ahead and lift up our hard drive so we can plug our fan back in. Just that plug there. And then we're just going to clip it right back down on top of the heat sink. Just like that. Of course, put our hard drive back. And our CD drive. Let's go ahead and slide that back in. And we can go ahead and plug these back in too. All right, so we've got everything... Um, put back inside the case. Everything is mounted like it's supposed to. Nothing is, you know, extremely loose. Check and make sure that everything is plugged in before you put things together. You don't want to put everything back together, go to turn it on, and you forget, like, you know, plugging in your fan or something. All right, so let's go ahead and put the top case back on. Of course, we're going to flip this over because we need to plug in our wireless card to the board itself, which is going to be that plug in here next to this little plastic standoff. So we're just going to move this towards the black back. That way we can line it up and plug it back in. All right, once we got that little plug back in, we're going to go ahead and set that down. So the easiest way to get this top line back up is there is actually some standoffs. If We lift this back up, move it out of the way just a little bit. There's a plastic standoff in this little corner here, and there's actually a white one that I pointed to earlier right here. And if you get those two lined up, you can go ahead and get your screws started. So let's go ahead and slide those back in just like that. Now we're going to put our eight screws back in that we took out. So we're just going to put all of those in their respective places. Of course, they're all marked with a C, so anything that's got a C next to it, that's going to be where a screw goes. All right, so to get these lined up, you can see this one fell all the way to the bottom. So you just want to make sure that this case is pushed down as far as it will go. And then just start all of these with your fingers. Don't use a screwdriver yet because you won't, don't want to cross thread anything. I mean, they're screwing into plastic, and so it's not like it's going to be the end of the world. But just get everything started with your fingers and then go back through and tighten everything down 
with your T10 Torx. All right, so we've got all those tightened down. Of course, be careful not to over tighten those because like I said, they are going into plastic and you can strip those out and then they won't be tight. And then you'll have possibly some grounding issues or, you know, a loose case. Um, obviously use hand tools only. Don't use any power tools or anything crazy like that. So let's go ahead and plug in our wireless card. And just like when we removed it, we want to line up this plug in with the plug in on the card. And so we're just going to set that down on top as straight as we can get it and then plug it down. And of course our holes are going to be lined up already and we can grab our two screws. All right, and again, don't over tighten those because they are going through a board and you definitely don't want to crack that. So let's go ahead and plug this back in. It's just going to go directly over the top of the port that we pulled it off of. It is a little tricky to get that lined up, but just be patient and get it directly over the top before you push down on it. And then we can go ahead and plug that into the front there, and then we can go ahead and plug in our speaker. Just like that. All right, so everything is all put back together as far as the internals go. Now we want to grab the top case and plug in our um, ribbon cable into the front. That way all of our buttons still work. So let's go ahead and move that back just a little bit and go ahead and get that plugged in. All right, so to put this ribbon cable back on, it is a lot easier to take the front place or the front plate um, off of the top cover of the outer case. Um, and by doing that, what you're gonna do is there is some... So this just slides, slides in just like that. As you can see, those clips line up. And so just gently pull up on those clips and it'll um, remove that front face. So now let's go ahead and that the right direction. And we want to take our ribbon cable here and plug it back into our port here. Let's go ahead and get this case put back in. So we're gonna line everything up and just set it just on the top, just like that. So we're gonna get everything clicked back where it's supposed to be. Just like that. It, it's fairly easy when you don't have this front place in, or this the front plate. So let's line everything up here, and we're just going to rotate that in, and we're going to push our little tabs down as we're doing this. And it goes in just like that. And now the case is put back in two halves. So let's go over to our left side, check the back side to make sure all of our seams are closed and everything is clipped see there was one clip that wasn't and actually our tamper sticker is kind of folded in but that's okay that is perfectly fine so now we can take our um little slide lock that we pulled out at the beginning and pull put that one back in and we can take our little slide lock and slide that back in there are some tracks that it rides on of course and then it's locked in place and then we can put our um Great back on that just clips in just like that. And that's all there is to it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. Gord Hamming here with the studios as always. And of course, if you guys want to see more content like this, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys next time.